good morning. My name is Roger Stroop. I'm the chairman of the board of the official South Carolina Hall of Fame. On behalf of the board of trustees, I'd like to welcome you to the 2020 induction ceremony. We are delighted you could join us to pay homage this morning to three South Carolinians, past and present, who made valuable contributions to American life, its culture, and its history. In just a moment, we'll begin the program with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the National Anthem, performed by the Claflin University Concert Choir under the direction of Dr. Jason Dungey. And then please remain standing for the invocation led by the Reverend Timothy McRae. We're pleased to have with us this morning from the Carolina Forest High School, Captain Kevin Boyle's unit, the Junior ROTC Cadet Color Guard, whose members are Link C. Sun, Abby Satari, Alan Washburn, and Taylor Cathy. Please rise for the presentation of colors.
seated. Today we are proud to honor Dr. Darius Rucker, Dr. Leo Twiggs, and the late Elizabeth Evelyn Wright. We are fortunate to have with us today a host of local and state dignitaries, as well as family and friends of Dr. Twiggs, Darius Rucker, and the late Elizabeth Evelyn Wright, and the students from the Horry County Schools who are with us as well. The South Carolina Hall of Fame recognizes the Palmetto State's most distinctive sons and daughters, and the individuals we honor today have distinguished themselves and dedicated their lives to public service, leaving their mark on our great state and nation. We are indeed proud to add their names to the list of South Carolina's finest. Now I'd like to ask the City of Myrtle Beach Mayor Brenda Bethune and the President and CEO of the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce to come forward. First, we'll leave Beth Brenda Bethune and then Karen Reardon. Good morning. I am so happy that the wind blew you all in here today, but it is a beautiful day on the Grand Strand and God is good. Uh, I would like to not only welcome you all here today, but I would also like to welcome a very special guest. We do have our South Carolina State Representative, Mr. Alan Clements with us today. Thank you, Alan. Myrtle Beach is extremely honored to be the official home of the South Carolina Hall of Fame. And it is such a privilege for me to share this event with you today as we recognize and honor three outstanding people who have made significant contributions to our state's heritage and progress. It's going to be a great ceremony. I thank you for being here and I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you very much. Good morning and welcome. I'm Karen Reardon, President and CEO of the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, we just want to thank you all for being here today uh, to join in this wonderful celebration of three amazing South Carolinians. The Chamber is indeed pleased to serve on the board of the South Carolina Hall of Fame and to be a presenting sponsor of this induction ceremony. We are so proud of the fact that the South Carolina Hall of Fame calls Myrtle Beach its home. And this is going to be, again, another great ceremony, adding three more people. So we will have 99 South Carolinians that our local residents, our students, and our visitors alike will all have the opportunity to learn more about and understand their significant place in our state's history. So again, welcome. We are glad you're here, and we appreciate you joining in in this celebration to honor these three amazing South Carolinians today. It's my pleasure now to introduce Dr. W. Franklin Evans, president of Boys College, who will give a tribute today to our 2020 deceased inductee, Elizabeth Evelyn Wright. We are so pleased to welcome today Mrs. Wright's great grandniece, Mrs. Jewel Barrett, along with her daughter, Jewel Delgado. Would y'all please stand and be recognized? They <laughs> come all the way from Los Angeles to be with us today. Dr. Evans is the ninth president of Boy East College, has been in education arena for over 25 years. Prior to being named the president of Voorhees College, Dr. Evans served as the interim president of South Carolina State University in Orangeburg, where he also served as the Provo and Chief Academic Officer. Currently, Dr. Evans is active in many organizations, including the NAACP, Black Family Preservation Group, the National Association of Black School Educators, and Toastmasters International. He is also an ordained elder with the Church of God in Christ. Please join me in welcoming Dr. W. Franklin Evans. Good morning. For a moment there, I thought Chairman Strzok was uh, getting my introduction to get on the board, and I was getting kind of happy. 
on behalf of our Board of Trustees of Voorhees College, our faculty, staff, our some 500 students and thousands alum, I greet you on this morning, a special day, as we recognize our founder, Elizabeth Evelyn Wright. To the South Carolina Hall of Fame Board of Trustees, let me say to you how pleased, how delighted we are to be here and for you to have selected our founder to be an inductee this year's class. I also would like to recognize Mr. Richard Reed, who is our college historian, who without his hard work and perseverance, this day would not have come for our founder. We're so glad that he is our historian and that he took the time and effort to make sure that our founder, Elizabeth Evelyn Wright, would be recognized. Mr. Reed, we do appreciate you. While I'm up here, in the event you see some tears fall from my eyes, don't get it twisted. I've got allergies, and that would be the reason for it. But Elizabeth Evelyn Wright, born in Talberton, Georgia, August 18, 1872, one of 21 children, at the age of 14, though, she saw a flyer that changed her life forever. That flyer was an advertisement for Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. Now, Talberton, Georgia is a long ways from Tuskegee, Alabama. But when Ms. Wright convinced family and others that Tuskegee was where she needed to go, she arrived at Tuskegee Institute, and under the wings of Booker T. Washington and his wife, Mrs. Washington, our founder was trained and molded to be of service to God. A 16-year-old, leaving family, leaving the comforts of home, the town you grew up in, and to move to a new state, taking on new and different responsibilities. She was impressed with how Booker T. Washington had gone to Hampton Institute, and once he finished Hampton, that he came and founded Tuskegee Institute. She was so impressed that she thought, one day I will be a founder of an institution, of a second Tuskegee. And so she came to South Carolina commissioned by God to do service. She tried to establish a school in Hampton County, but her efforts were soon falling in tears because that first effort, the building was burned down. The next time she tried, the school building was burned down. Time and time again, when she tried to build a school, fire took over. But finally being led to the metropolis of Denmark, South Carolina, Elizabeth Evelyn Wright successfully established an industrial school at the early age of about 23 years old, walking from church to church, home to home, town to town, sometimes only acquiring 25 cents when she traveled some 15, 20 miles by foot. She persevered. She did not let that deter her from achieving the goal, the dream, the mission of establishing a school. In addition to traveling throughout South Carolina, she traveled north, trying to secure financial assistance to raise money, and she heard of this great philanthropist, Ralph Voorhees in New Jersey. She ultimately wrote to him, met him, and convinced him that she had a plan that would work. And through the help of God touching his heart, Ralph Voorhees and his wife became that philanthropist that gave Ms. Wright the money 
to purchase 280 land, 280 acres of land in Bamberg County. He gave additional funds so that she could erect buildings on the campus. And later he gave another check so that she could purchase 94 acres of adjoining property. So it is only befitting that the school that was known as Denmark Industrial School be renamed as Voorhees Normal and Industrial School. Ms. Wright did not see it befitting for the school or the college to be named after her, but that Ralph Voorhees and his wife deserved that honor. Our beloved founder, Elizabeth Evelyn Wright, became the first African-American woman to have founded a higher ed institution in this world. We stand on the shoulders of a great individual who loved God and knew that she had a calling on her life. At Christmas time, I love to hear the song, Mary, Did You Know? And so last night as I was thinking, if I ever had the opportunity when I get to heaven to meet with Elizabeth Evelyn Wright, I want to say, Elizabeth Evelyn Wright, Lizzie, did you know? Did you know that one day you would be revered and viewed as walking on water? Did you know that your vision would save many sons and daughters? Lizzie, did you know that your dream would come to make us new? Did you know that your mission would deliver the masses from ignorance too? Lizzie, did you know that your work would give sight to the blind man? That your travels through the storm, the rain, and the woods of Bamberg, Hampton, and Colleton counties would be at your hand? Miss Wright, did you know that the Episcopal Church would have bishops and other greats that would revere you so greatly? Ms. Wright, did you know that 123 years later, we are still standing and expanding? Because of you, Ms. Wright, the blind will continue to see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, and the dumb will speak. Because of you, the state, the nation, and the world will know that you are a precious gift, a beautiful jewel from God. And speaking of jewels, I mentioned to you that she was one of 21 children. One of her sisters named Jewel, Jewel Wright Hallman. Today we have descendants of Miss Wright here with us. Two jewels, Jewel Bennett and Jewel Delegal. We all stand on the shoulders of Miss Elizabeth Evelyn Wright. Lizzie, for if it wasn't for her, where would we be? Elizabeth Evelyn Wright, we thank you for following God's command and his commission to come to South Carolina to little old Denmark to found Voorhees College. Thank you. <laughs> Let me ask that uh, the Jewel One and Jewel Two join me at the lectern at this time for this great honor.
morning, everyone. To God be the glory. Elizabeth Evelyn Wright had a vision, had an encouragement from God. She had a lot of faith. It is with our preservation that I accept this great award on my family's behalf. Thank you for all attending, and it is indeed a quite honor and a privilege to be here. Thank you. And uh, my mother just wanted us, you know, wanted to wanted all of you to know that. We have a legacy of educators. My mother has been edu in education for over 40 years, and I myself um, an, am a director of a program in South Los Angeles, South Central, and helping underserved children. So we will continue the legacy, and you know we're just so proud. And this is really what America is about. And thank you. And now we'll have a musical tribute in honor of Elizabeth Evelyn Wright by the Voorhees College Choir, directed by Rachel Jones. <laughs> 